Hi everybody, Andrea here and welcome back. So let's talk about the different classes of occlusion, class one, class two, class three, what they look like, but also the different bites as well. Underbite, overbite, open bite, what do they all mean? How can you tell which one it is? And also why it's so important to correct the bite, either with orthodontics, getting braces, Invisalign, or in some cases you won't have to do anything at all. It's not always about appearance. It could also be about function. So I'm going to show you guys a video here. Uh, let's see, just switching my screen. So this is just basically showing you the bite here. Look at the back teeth and then we're going to show you the front teeth. Okay, so notice how the front teeth here are, there's an open space there. They are overlapping, which is okay, but this is overlapping a bit too much and there's quite a space here. The ideal bite is when the front teeth overlap the bottom teeth. The bottom teeth at the top are touching the top teeth at the back, okay? But notice how these teeth aren't even closing down altogether, so that's not a good sign. And what I tell my students is, look at the first molars here. For the ideal bite class one, this front cusp here should be into the groove of the bottom one. So it's a little bit further forward. So this is tending to a class two. If it's further back, it's tending to a class three. Okay. Um, I have some pictures here to kind of show you too. So notice this first picture. This is the ideal class one. Notice how the teeth are biting together. It looks good, right? Notice class two here. The front teeth are protruded. So they're over a little bit and everything's kind of moving towards the mesial towards the front and then class three is the complete opposite where everything's moving towards the back and the bottom teeth are overlapping the top which should never happen then the last picture here this is showing quite an open bite the front teeth are protruding but there's also quite an open bite here as well let me move down to another video that i that i had saved for you so this looks good okay what a lot of people don't realize is that overlapping is normal notice how the front teeth and the bottom teeth overlap we want that if somebody is saying you have a heavy overbite or a severe overbite of say 80 percent 50 percent that's okay if you have a 10 percent overbite that's okay too what it's measuring is these front teeth here how far they overlap the bottom teeth so if this front tooth was all the way down here i would say that's an 80 percent overbite but as long as the back teeth look okay you are okay and it's functional. It's when we see this at the front, we might go, okay, let's look at the back teeth and see how their function is. And then we kind of go from there. So here's a little video for you. Um, it's just kind of showing the front teeth overall. These videos are fun. It's just kind of always good to show. So we look at the front teeth and the back teeth. As an example, I have a, what's called a severe overbite. Let me go a little bit closer to the camera. Hope I don't have anything in my teeth. So notice how my front teeth bite together. See that? That's almost 100%. That's probably 90% overbite. When you often hear high numbers in dental, you think, uh-oh, that's not good. Thinking about periodontal probing, the higher the number, the worse it is. But a high overbite doesn't necessarily mean anything bad because my back teeth fit ideally into that class one. Okay, so let me show you kind of those things again for you. Um, going back to this video, I like this one the most because it does show you quite a few things. So going back again here, I'm going to pause it in a second. There we go. Oh, I tried to pause it. Sorry. So notice how the front molar, this front cusp here. Oh, sorry. Let me make that a bit bigger for you. This front cusp here should be into the groove here. So it's tending a little further towards the front, towards the midline. So just looking at the back teeth, I, I would have already said a class two. Okay, so let's just kind of look at that video again. And the mouth is up and down, so we're checking the bite. That's the best way to check the bite is the patient's open and then I tell them to close down, um, close down on the back teeth. Because some people, when they close down and they're laying back, they kind of do a bunch of this, a bunch of that. And if they did that, you might be thinking, oh my God, what kind of a bite is that? Remind them to just close normally on their back teeth. And then the front teeth here, 
Notice this overlap. Remember in this last video, see how the front teeth are overlapping the bottom? They're closed, right? This is open. This is an open bite. So they're biting on their back teeth right now, but the teeth aren't closing at the front. Okay, so they're biting down, but there's this open bite here. That isn't functional and that can lead to problems. So that brings me to my next talk of basically, this is why we recommend orthodontics. It's not just for appearance. A lot of people think, well, I don't need my teeth to be perfectly straight. I don't wanna spend $8,000 or however much it is on ortho, forget it. But this is functional. Over time, since this bite isn't ideal, the bite is going to change and it could even lead to pain. Um, our jaw, like joint area here, needs to be biting in a correct way. If we're too much off to the left, too much off to the right, I mean, I'm being very, I'm over exaggerating here, but we're biting on one side more than another side. Everything should be fairly even. Over time, we, we could be age 20, 30, 40, we could be in a lot of pain because our jaw joint has been biting too much and overcompensating on one side if our bite is off. So that's that's why we like the ideal class one. And I do have a little study guide as well for my students here. Uh, let me share my screen here. So I kind of go through, let me zoom in, the different classes of occlusion and what that means here. So I tried to zoom in more, you guys. It's not letting me. I think I've zoomed into the max. But class one is normal. So remember how I talked about in that video. Class one is normal. This is talking about in normal occlusion, the upper teeth slightly overlap the lower teeth and the molars align correctly. The cusps of the molars fit into the spaces between the cusps of opposing molars. This is considered class one normal occlusion. Class two is also called retro when, when the teeth are further forward. Class three is called pro. Um, when the teeth are pushed further back. But then we also talk about overbite, underbite, crossbite, and open bite. So open bite is what I had shown you before where there's a space. Crossbite is a bit different. So this occurs when one or more of the upper teeth bite on the inside of the lower teeth. Because remember, the top teeth should always overlap the bottom, always. So even if there's a couple teeth where the bottom overlap the top, that's considered crossbite and we need to make a note of that in the patient's chart. And then underbite is when the lower front teeth are positioned ahead of the upper front teeth. So that's when the bottom teeth here are positioned further forward than they should be. The top teeth should always overlap the bottom teeth. When they're not, we have problems and that's when there's the changes of bite, the different issues, the different classes of occlusion, all of that. Um, and then basically we decide what to do from there. Okay. There's going to be x-rays. We check the back teeth. We check the front teeth. A common question is when do we decide this? When do we decide if a patient needs orthodontic work? We usually like to wait until all the permanent teeth are in typically around 12 to 13, but age six, for example, we usually have an idea because they're starting to get their first permanent molars. But we might say, okay, things are looking crowded already. That tells us the bite could be off. We'll keep checking every year to kind of see how those permanent teeth come in. Because as the patient loses the baby teeth, the permanent teeth come in and then we have an idea of what to do. But quite often we don't start braces until age 12 or even age 10. Sometimes we do an appliance. So depending on what the issue is. I'm just talking about the different classes of occlusion and the bites in this video. Another video, there's different appliances. So let's say they've determined that the mouth is too small or the archway of the upper um, palate is too narrow and, and they need to extend that, make it wider before we even consider braces because you can move the teeth, but you might have to change the shape 
of the mouth first. So that is done with appliances and that's typically done before braces, before orthodontics. So this could be done age seven, age six even, age 10. So this is why it's so important to see an orthodontist. They are a dental specialist. They are a dentist that specializes in the bite. So, cause there's a lot to look at as you can imagine. In my opinion, these days, 99.9% .9 of people will need braces. If you're a parent, start saving up for your children now. It's going to be about $8,000, but it's completely worth it because if their bite is off, if things don't look ideal because there's crowding, that can that can hinder somebody's self-esteem. And when they're 30, you know, things are going to be off. The teeth really make a big difference. Imagine if you had no teeth, right? Your mouth would look different. You wouldn't be as attractive, you know, so you have to think of these things too. And when a patient is 30, it's a lot harder to go through all of these things because ortho takes longer. The mouth is fully developed. So any appliance that we might have to do is going to take a lot longer to change things. So lots to think about, right? So let me just show you guys a couple things again. So remember the different classes of occlusion here. Um, see how the mouth can look very different in different ways. Overall, we want the top teeth to overlap the bottom teeth. And then notice in this video here, there's lots happening. The patient is biting up and down so we can see how they're actually biting on their back teeth. What teeth are kind of hitting first? It should be fairly even. This can be checked with articulating paper. And then this one here is just basically showing overbite which a lot of people think uh oh i have a severe overbite this isn't good but the top teeth are overlapping the bottom teeth sometimes they can overlap quite a bit but then you look at the molars to see what class of occlusion they have class one class two or class three so showing you again just this kind of little study guide i think i talked about everything i always like to double check to make sure i didn't leave anything out for you Overbite, underbite, crossbite, and underbites are just different ways that those front teeth can look and even the premolars, even the molars too, but it's basically looking at the anterior teeth. How do we check this? How do we check the bite with articulating paper and x-rays is very important. X-rays is great to show the whole mouth to see how the jaw overall, the upper and the lower comes together and kind of what's happening there. Um, there's different things we can do. There's, uh, there's Invisalign, braces, sometimes even crowns, bridges, veneers is more aesthetic, but there's lots of different things we can do. Um, but it's important to consider the function. It's not just about appearance if the teeth are crowded, but it's also about function and how those teeth are going to bite down and close together. So I do have some mock exam practice for my students, but I do upload these on Instagram as well, where I talk about the different questions. We talk about the answers, all of that. So if you haven't joined Dental L yet on Instagram, you should. I can leave the link for you guys down below. More on the website at dentalL.com. Check it out, you guys. I am always here to help. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.